Good morning, my dear friend. It is a great privilege being at the Studios of Evangelist Ministry. Merry Christmas to all of you, my friends. Merry Christmas to you from the Studios of the Evangelist Ministry. From the studios of the Evangelist Ministry, we spread the good news about Jesus Christ and His saving grace. Our mission is to lead people into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ. The topic of this morning, Blessed Christmas Moment. 2022. Let's open the Bible. In the book of Isaiah chapter 9 from verse 1 to 10, the Bible said, Nevertheless, the demons shall not be such as was in her vexation. When are the first he lightly afflict the land of Zebulun, and the land of Naphtali. And afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea, beyond Jordan and Galilee of the nations. The people that walk in darkness have seen a great light. <clears throat> they that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them has the light shine. Thou hast multiplied the nation and not increased the joy. The joy before thee according to the joy in harvest. And as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For thou hast brought the up of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. <clears throat> For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise, and garment raw in blood. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. For unto us a child is born unto us, a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David <clears throat> and upon his kingdom to audit and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth ever, even forever. The seal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. The Lord sent a, a word into Jacob and it has lighted upon Israel. And all the prophets shall know, even Ephraim and the inhabitant of Samaria, that say in the pride and astuteness of heart, the brick are fallen down, but we will build with hewn stones. The sycamore are cut down, but we will change them into cedar. Amen. My dear friends, Christmas, wonderful Christmas. I remember when I was a young man, when I was a young boy, Christmas was approaching and my hope was a big present to me. But uh, my hope 
never reach to me. Very sadly, I said that I never received that present that I always wish. But now I know that the best present I ever get in my personal life was when God gave his son for me, to die for me, for my sins. That's the best present we ever get. Salvation. My dear friends, when you are saved, that's the best present you ever get during the year. And I'm very thankful for my salvation this morning. I'm very thankful <clears throat> that God reached me out 28 years ago. And I feel happy, very, very excited. Even that when I was a young boy, I never, I never get that present. A present that I, I always dream. <clears throat> but now I, I, I think that I've received the best present. Salvation. Salvation is the best present you ever get in your life. And I'm very thankful for my salvation today. My dear friends, let's think about, let's think about the truth. Let's think about Christmas. What a Christmas moment we're going to have this year. But my dear friends, as we prepare again to celebrate the birthday of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, let us consider the fact not of things that the world has associated with the season, but what God has said in his holy words. The Bible that gives all the true reason for the season and fact that we can delight in now and forevermore. I remember when I was a young boy, I was disappointed because that present never reached me. But now I understand that it's better presence than that. And now the Bible gives me the true reason for the season and fact that we can delight now and forever, forevermore. That's what it is, forevermore. What should Christmas really mean? Christmas should be a time when, when people forget their problems and form a fellowship with one another because that is what Jesus wants. This is really Christmas. Have the opportunity to put all your kids together. Think about all your family together. All my kids and my grandkids together. That will be a wonderful, a very wonderful Christmas. That will be the best present I ever have beside my salvation. You see, weeks ago I was thinking about wishing and hoping, praying that I will have my family together this Christmas. I want my kids, I want my grandkids together in the old house. But what should Christmas really mean? <clears throat> Christmas should be a time when people forget their problems and form a fellowship with one another because that is what Jesus wants. For this is the message that you heard from the beginning that we should love one another. First John chapter 3, verse 11. 
My dear friends, everyone should be able to put aside the difference or indifference and live as a loving, Christ-centered family. This is what exactly I told my kids. Everyone should be able to put aside their difference and live as a loving Christ-centered family. Christmas is more than gift. Being surrounded with those you love is the greatest blessing you can have for your life. Yes, being surrounded with those you love the most. Your family and your extended family. That will be a wonderful day. Christmas is more than gift. Being surrounded with those you love the most is the greatest blessing you can have for your life. Let's think about what the Bible said. What the Bible said about Christmas. The Bible said, for to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. A mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. The book of Isaiah said, For unto us a child is born. <laughs> unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. The mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. But my dear friends, the true meaning of Christmas is to celebrate the birth of the Almighty in a humble manger. It is the celebration of the nativity of Christ and the unselfish love of God. Let's think about that God gave us the very, very first present in life. But until this moment, I think that is the first present I ever had in my life. When God gave His Son, Jesus Christ, as a present to the world, present to humanity to save it from sin, and evil. Wow! True meaning of Christmas is to celebrate the birth of the Almighty in a humble manger. It is the celebration of nativity of Christ and the unselfish love of God. He gave His Son Jesus Christ as a present to the world, as a present to human beings to save it from sin and evil. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son to whosoever believe in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. John chapter 3, verse 16. My dear friends, Christmas is an event full of hope. Yes, if you think about what God gave you, you might think that it, this Christmas is full of hope, full of joy, full of happiness. It's the great expectation generated by God for His people through His prophet in difficult times of moral, spiritual, and political crisis. Christmas is full of hope and joy if you believe it, if you had, I say had, accept Jesus Christ as a Savior and Lord. Now, the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. 
and believing that you might abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. Romans 15, 13. My dear friends, the Lord's prophet had always been the messenger of hope and joy. They knew how to encourage the people when everything seems to be lost. And that God had abandoned them. Well, that's what they think. In those times, as in our hours in the present era, the religious, economic, political situation was desperate and distressing. The people live in a cruel, inhuman condition of pain, of frustration, of moral crisis, abuse of the authorities, and finally, poverty. It is in this circumstance that the Messiah is announced by the messenger of the Lord, proclaiming with great joy and gladness the Lord's anointing. Yes, my friends. Yes. The people that walk in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death upon them has the light shine. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2. It has been a long time since the Savior was announced. Many in his time doubt or simple did not believe the prophecy. But after thousands of years, we can verify that this prophecy has been fulfilled already. The promised Messiah was born and lived among us to bring us salvation. The Lord kept his word. He did not fail or abandon his people. He, he is always faithful that he is our great hope. Jesus Christ is my great hope. God is faithful. The, the question that arises this morning is this. Are you faithful? God is faithful. But the question arises this morning. Are you faithful? My dear friends, today Christmas is just another religious celebration. It has become customary to celebrate without understanding its true meaning. Merchants have taken advantage of this Christian holiday to do the greatest business of the whole year. And we are part of them. Believe it or not. Let's think about it. They make money because I go out and buy presents. So my dear friends, it's incredible that even non-believers in Jesus have dedicated themselves to making great profits at the expenses of his name. But we, the true Christians, know well that this is not the real purpose of celebrating Christmas. Christmas is, is to remember and celebrate that Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came to reconcile us with God to be with us, to live with us, and to give his life to save us, only out of love. <clears throat> Let's think about this, my dear friends. <clears throat> but God demonstrates his love for us by the fact that the Messiah died for us while we were sinners. Now that we have been justified by his blood, how much more will we be saved from the wrath through him? For, for if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. How much more, having been reconciled, 
will we be saved by his life? Romans 8, verse 8 and 10. But my dear friends, we are also the Lord prophets in today's day. Why did I say we are our prophets? Doesn't it sound too good for me, right? But in this present time, therefore, we must evangelize. Proclaim. When you proclaim, you become a prophet. Proclaim and announce that Emmanuel is still with us. That he called us to follow him. That he invite us to share our love with those who suffer. I say share our love. <clears throat> yes. Yes, my dear friends, I said that uh, Jesus Christ invite us to share our love with those who suffer with him, who cries and groans in pain, with whom he is lost and abandoned, with whom he has no chance of hope. Yes, we've been anointed by the Lord to proclaim the gospel, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, my dear friend, we've been called and anointed to evangelize this present society. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken heart, to preach deliverance, to the captives and recover of sight to the blind to set a liberty to them that are bruised. Luke, Luke chapter 4, verse 18. My dear friends, we must proclaim every day that our hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ and in no one else. My dear friends, hope that arise from our faith in Almighty God. Christmas is the appropriate time for serious reflection in our eternal destiny. Have you ever think about where will be your eternal destiny? You have to know that that is not the end, but it's just the beginning of a new life in heaven, one new life in hell. But you have the opportunity to choose which way you want to go. Because at this morning, you can accept Jesus Christ as a Savior and Lord, and you are on your way to heaven, my friends. Yes, Christmas is an appro appropriate time for serious reflection and our eternal destiny. Although we normally associate Christmas with happy worldly celebration, it's not right. But my dear friend, it's also an appropriate time for serious reflection in our eternal destiny, heaven or hell. Let's think about Jesus Christ said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father, but by me. John 14, 6. My dear friend, the Lord say, I am the way, the true and life, and no man come unto the Father, but by me. If you realize in this verse, there is no middle ground. When it comes to figuring out who Jesus is, because the Lord himself told he is the only way to heaven. He is the only way to, to the Father. If you accept Jesus Christ as a Savior and Lord, and this morning you are in your way to heaven. Yes, my friend. Let's think about our eternal home. Well, my dear friends, dear friends, Let's think about, let's come back again a little bit from the beginning. When I was a little boy, I expected for a present that never reached to me. 
I was the kind of boy that I always dreamed. I was a dreamer. I was waiting for a present. A present that I never had. A present that never reached me. But my dear friends, I get to realize now that God gave his children many wonderful gifts, not just for Christmas, but at the right time, at the right moment, when we did the most, God, God is there with me, always. Now, when I'm thinking about that, that present that never reached me, don't make me feel so sad because now I know that God gives his children many wonderful gifts, not just for Christmas, but at the right time. But God give God's great gift to us is the gift of his son. Wow. Think about that. God is good, my dear friends. God is good. God is good. God gave his children many wonderful gifts. The best gift. The best gift. The best gift. For us. Is God's greatest gift to us. Is the gift of his son. Let's think about that. The Lord Jesus Christ. That's the best gift. If you have that gift, just forget about the rest of the gift that you might want. That means today in this Christmas, you can have the gift of God, accepting Jesus Christ as a Savior and Lord. My dear friends, if you not say, if you don't know which way you go when you die, Today is the day that you might, that you might, that you might know where you're going if you accept Jesus Christ as a Savior and Lord. Dear friend, God gave his children many wonderful gifts, not just for Christmas, but at the right time, at the right moment. But God's greatest gift to us is the gift of his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believing in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3.16 What a wonderful gift. What a wonderful gift for Christmas. Wow! Everlasting life through faith in Jesus Christ. Is that wonderful? What a wonderful gift for Christmas. Wow. Everlasting life through faith in Jesus Christ. So God first gave me Jesus Christ so that he would die for my sins and I could become a child of God. Would you like this present? Would you like the present of God in this morning? Just raise your hand. Raise your hand. And say, Jesus Christ, I invite you to come into my heart. If Jesus Christ knocked the door of your heart, let's open it and allow Jesus Christ come into your heart and this morning. What a wonderful gift for Christmas if we accept Jesus Christ as a Savior and Lord. Wow. Everlasting life through faith in Jesus Christ. So God first gave me Jesus Christ so that he would die for my sins and I could become a child of God. But as many as receive him, to them gave the power to become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. John chapter 1 verse 12. My dear friend, then God gave me a Christ. God gave me Jesus Christ to live in me so that I can live as a child of God should live. 
Did I make myself understand? Now, it is time to think about what I can give to God. If I truly, if I truly love God and I appreciate all the greatest thing he has done for me, I will want to give him the gift that please him the most. It is not true, my friends. If you really appreciate your salvation, you want to give God what he really pleased. Now is the time to think about what I can give to God. If I truly love God and appreciate all the great things he has done for me, I will want to give him the gift that please him the most. Then the question arises in your heart at this moment. It is not true, my friends. Is no that answer or question that arises in your heart at this moment? I say, I will want to give him the gift, please him the most. The question arises, what will be the gift? Let's think about it for a minute. I give you a minute. What will be the gift that will please God the most? When can I give God? What can I give God that please Him the most? Let's think about that. It is my money. Because people think about money right away. People think that they can buy anything with money. You're wrong completely wrong. A lot of things only God can give you that money cannot buy. But what will be the present? What can I give God that please him the most? It is the money? No. No. God doesn't need your money. It is working for him? No. It is not that either. So, what is the gift that please God the most? My dear friend, it is the gift of myself. Give myself to him. That would be the best present that I, I ever give to God. If I surrender to him this morning. Surrender myself completely to God and this morning. It is the gift of myself. If I truly love God with all my heart, I will want to give him the gift he desired the most. It is the same gift that the Macedonian believers gave to God in that time. And the Bible said, and this, not as we expected, but they gave themselves first to the Lord and then by the will of God to us. Second Corinthians chapter 5, chapter, chapter 8, verse 5. My dear friends, the best gift we can give to the Lord in this Christmas is the gift of ourselves. Surrounded to Jesus and this morning, surrounded to Jesus is the best thing you can give to God in this Christmas. This is the gift that the Lord appreciates more than anything else. Give your heart to Jesus. My dear friends, we get to a conclusion. A conclusion, my dear friends. The best gift we can give to the Lord is the gift of ourselves. This is the gift that the Lord appreciates more than anything else. This is the gift that the Lord appreciates more than any other. My dear friends, if you haven't done that, Keep your heart to Jesus and this morning and receive the biggest present of your life, salvation. Yes, my dear friends, this is the gift that the Lord appreciates more than any other. Keep your heart to Jesus. What does it mean? What does this mean? When I give myself to the Lord, it means that I am giving my life to the Lord to do his will instead of mine. Gives everything I have. For this is the will of God. Even your sanctification. First Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 3. My dear friend. 
this Christmas. This wonderful Christmas of 2022, all Christians must make this hope come true. Sharing with others, sharing with your family, sharing with your neighbor, with your friends, sharing with others, announcing that every day, listen to me, that every day the Lord Jesus can be born in every heart that repent of its sin and follow him. The Lord said, and he said to them all, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. My dear friends, my thing is Christmas. The best present you ever had is God's son. He gave his son like a present for humanity. Have you ever accepted Jesus Christ as a savior and Lord? Would you like to have this present? Accept Jesus Christ as a savior and Lord. My dear friends, to all of you, to all of you, my dear friends. First, I'm very thankful to God for his son, Jesus Christ. That's the best present I ever had. And I just want to tell you, thank you also for allowing me to visit your homes on Saturday mornings. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to all of you, followers of this YouTube ministry and followers of Facebook and important followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you and God bless America.